Pennsylvania's drinking water was under the microscope recently, and not everybody was happy with what was discovered. Chemicals were found in the water all across the state that can be harmful depending on their concentration. Those standards are set by the EPA. Now a state senator says, well, that's not good enough. NBC10 political reporter Lauren Mig talked to the senator about what she believes is a safe way to go. With me now is Pennsylvania State Senator Maria Collette. Her district covers parts of Bucks and Montgomery counties. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And Senator, you're reintroducing legislation that would set new standards for drinking water in Pennsylvania. Why do this now? Well, this is the perfect time to do it. You know, we're seeing new studies that are coming out, new information about uh, contaminants in our drinking water. And we've got to make sure that everyone has access to clean, safe drinking water in every community across the Commonwealth. One of the things that we're learning is that contaminated drinking water is not a southeastern Pennsylvania problem. It's not limited to the district that I represent, that uh, we are seeing that there are issues across our Commonwealth. So the legislation that I'm introducing is going to ensure that uh, Pennsylvanians' constitutional right to clean water is um, upheld. And you, you mentioned uh, the results that, that we're finding. There was, there was some sampling recently that the Wolf Administration says shows that PFAS, which is one of the chemicals you're talking about, was not widespread. Do you think that that is good news? And why do you consider that recent sampling results, you know, not enough to assure people it's okay? Well, you know, one of the things that we did learn is that between June of 2019 and May of 2021, the DEP tested drinking water samples from more than 400 sites across the Commonwealth. And they were looking for various PFAS chemicals. Those are the per and polyfluoral alkyl substances that people in my district and in the Southeast are familiar with uh, because of the runoff discovered that, that came from the local military base in Horsham. So the PFOS and the PFOA, those are two of the oldest and the most toxic of the known PFAS chemicals, and they were frequently observed. They were found in 103 and 112 sites, respectively. So, you know, when we look at the ratio compared to the over 400 sites that were sampled, and we're seeing that, um, you know, we found those PFAS and PFOA chemicals in 100 or more than 100 of those sites, you know, it, to me, that speaks to it being pretty widespread. And I understand that one of the good things that came out of this study is that we found that it's not as widespread as we had anticipated, but that doesn't mean that it's something that we, we can ignore. Uh, there were only two sites that were found that exceeded uh, the EPA health advisory level of 70 parts per trillion. So that's really important. That's really good news that we're not uh, suffering from uh, extreme contamination the way that we were, you know, sort of expecting to find from this study. But the truth is that we're not able to ignore this. The sites that we where we did find that those levels were elevated above the 70 parts per trillion of the health advisory limit set by the federal EPA uh, were in Center County at Unity University Park Airport and then um, along French Creek in Crawford County. So I think that really speaks to the wide level of concern that we should have across our Commonwealth. So how would things work under your proposal? Um, would these standards then be higher than what the EPA is now setting? And uh, who would determine that? So that's a, those are great questions. We need to really be mindful when we're talking about setting these limits and maximum contaminant level is how we refer to it when we're talking about setting those limits. The legislation that I'm introducing, SB 611, would set an acceptable level of PFAS, and that's a combined of all of those PFAS chemicals, of 10 parts per trillion uh, until, until our governor or our EPA at the federal level or our DEP at the state level set a maximum contaminant level. So this is really urgent. What I would like to do is set an interim level so that our water suppliers are able to clean to uh, an appropriate level, make sure that we have access to good, safe drinking water in all of our communities. And, you know, the results of this study have shown us that this really is an urgent need. This is really something that we've got to make sure that we're um, taking care of. The other thing I want to, you know, remind your viewers of is that that 70 parts per trillion is a health advisory level. It's not enforceable. It's not a maximum contaminant level. It's not a standard that water suppliers have to clean to. It's just an advisory level. So, my so when you're talking about when you're talking about your your proposal, then how would you in, enforce yours if if 
more were to be found in the drinking water, what would be what would be the consequences and what would be the recourse for folks who live in that area? Absolutely. So uh, one of the good things about it is that there's a companion piece of legislation, SB 612, that would classify PFAS as hazardous hazardous substances other under Pennsylvania's Hazardous Sites Cleanup Act. Sorry, that's a mouthful. But the good news about that is, as you said, if residents are finding that the levels in their drinking water or water suppliers are finding that the levels in the drinking water are higher than that, then suddenly we're able to unlock a whole level of funding that would help to uh, ensure that that community would be able to clean the drinking water, provide filters on their wells so that people are getting drinking water that's under the maximum contaminant level that would be set at an interim stage until the governor sets or, or our DEP sets the maximum contaminant level that's enforceable. So it would require our uh, drinking water suppliers to uh, test for and see Example for these um, uh, chemicals and to clean to them. And then if uh, SB 612 also goes into effect, then again, we are able to unlock some of that funding from HASCA and make sure that our water suppliers are able to clean to the levels that are appropriate and effective for people. All right, we'll have to leave it there. State Senator Maria Collette, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Pennsylvania state officials identified nearly 900 public water systems in the Commonwealth that are located close to potential sources of PFAs and PFA contamination. You can find the full DEP study by going to NBC10.com slash find it on 10.